Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 24. It's on metallic solids like this big gold nugget that was found. And so it's shiny, conducts electricity. We've always been fascinated with metals and we also can bend metals to our will. In other words, we can mix gold with silver and we get something called electrum. Uh, and today we can mix gold with things like nickel, magnesium, palladium, and we can get white gold. And so we can form these alloys of, of metals. And so metallic solids are built on this electron C model where all those electrons are free, able to move around, and that gives them lots of different properties. They're shiny, good conductors, they're ductile, they're malleable, and they can form these alloys. And that's all built on this idea that the electrons are free to move about. They also can form alloys. The alloys that they form still are going to show that electron C model, and so they're still going to have those same properties. The alloys can be broken down into interstitial alloys when we're actually filling holes in the middle itself with smaller atoms, or they could be substitutional. Substitutional is when we're going to replace one of the atoms in the metal with a different atom. An example could be brass. And so the chemistry of alloys can sometimes differ. And so when we were making stainless steel, for example, we can make steel that doesn't rust because of the different atoms that we're adding. And so remember, in metallic bonding, we shouldn't talk about just one metallic bond. And that's because all of these electrons are moving around, these free electrons. And as they do, they push on each other and they create this sea of electrons. And then the protons, the nuclei, are on the inside of that. Now they can still move around and it gives them those cool properties. Number one, they're shiny. Why are metals shiny? It's because they have all these free electrons on their surface and so as light hits it, it's able to absorb some of that and reflect a lot of that light. If we're looking at their conduction, they can conduct both electricity and heat and the reason why is that they have high amounts of these free electrons and the atoms have a certain amount of ability to move. They're ductile. When you pull them, they're going to stretch out like this. They're not going to break. They're not brittle. Um, they also are malleable. We can hit them and we can smooth them out. And the reason why is you can think of it almost like one big atom with all these positive charges on the inside and electrons holding them where they are. And so these protons have the ability to move or these nuclei have the ability to move. And also they can form alloys. And we've known this for years. That we can heat different metals and we can get di different characteristics from that. And so electrum, remember, is an example of mixing gold with silver. But we can break these alloys into basically two different parts. We can have what are called interstitial alloys. Interstitial alloys, a great example would be steel. What we're doing when we're heating it up is we're allowing carbon to fill the holes inside that iron. And what it does is increase the density and it's going to make it a better metal. Another type of metal are going to be substitutional alloys. Substitutional alloys is when we're taking in atoms that are about the same size. So if we take copper and we add zinc to it, then we can make brass. It's going to have different characteristics than those metals by themselves. Stainless steel is formed the same kind of a way. If we take stainless steel and we add atoms to it, we get a metal that looks like that. What type is that? Well, it's a combination. It's interstitial because we're going to have this carbon, but it's also going to be substitutional because we have chromium and nickel. And what that's going to do is allow it to not interact with oxygen. It's not going to allow it to rust, and so we can create a steel that doesn't rust as much over time. Did you learn to compare the properties and constituent elements in an alloy? Those atoms could either fit on the inside, interstitial alloys, or it could be substitutional. And then going back to metals, do you understand this whole electron model and how we can use that to predict the different properties of metals? Well, if you do, then you understand metallic solids, and I hope that was helpful.